I grew up in Singapore, where I felt firsthand what it was like to live in a society where free speech is restricted. Social harmony is prioritized over civil liberties in Singapore's multicultural society, fomenting a culture of fear and self-censorship on top of legal prohibitions. I moved to America for college when I was 17. I wanted a challenging education and a social milieu that valued the free exchange of ideas because I knew that was the only way to grow intellectually and cultivate emotional resiliency. It wasn't until I was in graduate school that I realized that the America I had sought was increasingly resembling the conditions in which I grew up in in Singapore. Across town from me in Boston, Harvard University had disinvited a record number of speakers for reasons including their views on topics like immigration, Israel, and sexual orientation. Harvard's guidelines banned behavior evidently intended to dishonor such characteristics as race, gender, ethnic group, religious belief, or sexual orientation. This guideline was nearly identical to what was law in Singapore. But even worse than that, an intolerant ideology that promoted collective guilt and racial essentialism had begun to emerge. I noticed my white and male classmates were not being allowed to express opinions that addressed issues related to people of color women. Phrases like, check your privilege, became a part of everyday conversation. This was something that I never witnessed in Singapore, a nation that was prosperous despite its faults because of its focus on the equality of all people. After university, I co-founded an organization named Ideas Beyond Borders, where we translated and digitized texts about Enlightenment ideas into Arabic for free. We worked with translators who lived in places like Libya, Syria, Egypt, Iran, and Iraq. My exposure to so many failed states led me to see the common denominators that undergirded societal dysfunction and civil conflict. Many of these places were severely dogged by extremism, intolerance, and sectarianism. Even more than my life in Singapore, this provided me with an intense appreciation for the freedoms we have here in America. Why were the students around me so focused on the problems with my white male classmates and teachers while they largely ignored the injustices I was witnessing around the world? And since I've graduated, it seems like these trends have spread through our nation far beyond the reaches of academia. While so many were focused on American culture wars, including, for example, asking Disney to fire Gina Carano for supposedly offensive tweets, few were paying attention while Disney made deals to film with the government in Xinjiang, China, where Uyghur Muslims were being held in concentration camps. This way of looking at the world has a goal of raising awareness of racial injustice. That's laudable, but within this conception of the world, there is also a simplistic and reductive understanding of power dynamics in which oppression must always come from people seen as white, male, Western, heterosexual, cisgender, or able-bodied, and be inflicted upon those seen as marginalized, people of color, colonized or indigenous people, women, LGBT, or the disabled. This lens ignores the struggle against real repression globally including what I have witnessed in Singapore and the Middle East. In doing so, it empowers illiberal authoritarian forces from China to Russia to the stirrings of Islamist groups eager to rebuild their caliphate. All around the world, from pro-democracy activists in Hong Kong to feminists in Egypt, countless people seek the freedoms that we in the West take for granted. Meanwhile, we are undoing the ideas that have made the modern West the most progressive place on the planet while shielding the world's most brazen abuses of human rights from criticism. If you care about justice for oppressed people, it's incumbent on us to push back against bad ideas. America has problems, and we need to improve, but the center of the struggle for human dignity isn't here. Please, let's keep America the country I want it to come to. I'm Melissa Chen. Join me in defending pro-human values at fairforall.org.